I'm just trying to use a few examples here just to show you things. It's not the full list or anything. I'm using timber frame as the method, but it doesn't matter. Don't be fo focusing yourself in and saying, oh, he's all focusing on timber frame. I can do this with any detail and you give me any type of construction. It doesn't matter. I'm just using this as the example. And what I'm looking for is to show you how things might be done to make it a better performance. So I'm just starting off here with this little model. I'm starting outside the house just for the moment. I want to just look at a couple of things and then I'll turn it around and we look at the inside of it. Now, stressing to you that these are not perfect models by any means. These are models that we get trainees apprentices to make for us as, as little projects that they might do. So we'll spot errors in them that he didn't get that bit right, but mostly they'll be, they'll be okay. So first of all, I'm looking at the outside construction here to begin with. We have a natural, uh, a natural installation in the, in the timber frame. So I want to just stress to you, just as a loose rule, where you have timber frame construction at 600 centres, which is the normal nowadays, the thermal bridge area, which is the area where the timbers are, will represent about 12 to 15 percent of the construction. So it straight away means you have 12 to 15 percent of thermal bridges. So what we do is we add up the thickness by the lengths of all of the timbers in relation to the overall construction, and it works out about 12 to 15 percent. Okay, so just to stress that here, and I need to address that issue. So I have this lovely insulation in here, it's grand, and then I have my stabilizing layer on the outside. And what they've done here is they've introduced a new layer, so it's wood fibre in this case, and the aim of this layer is to eliminate the thermal bridges completely. So it's a continuous sheet, it's running across everything, it's plunged on, it's suitable for exterior in this case, so that the thermal bridges are eliminated in this case here, so that's grand. Now, I'm only dealing with the wall. We could talk about what happens when I get to the floor level and how does it meet, and I'll come to that in a minute. But just for the minute, grand. The question is, does this wall meet the building regulations requirements? If I built this wall today, would it meet the building regulations requirements? So I have a U value of something like 0.44 on that. I have a U value of something like 0.42 on that. And I work out the thickness and I do my calculation and suddenly, oh, 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 it doesn't meet the building regulation requirements. It's actually, it's only coming out at about 0.23 overall. So despite the fact that, oh yeah, it's lovely and it's grand and all that, it's not meeting the building regulation requirements. So I'll show you how we might address something extra just on the inside, just to take it that extra step. So remember that your wall requirements today, if you build from the 2011 regulations, 0.21 of a U value the entire structure has to have. So just, just please remember that. Looking at our base construction, the, the, the support layer, we have the board, we have our wind tight layer, we have this extra bit of insulation, and this battening here is just for an airflow, and then they just decided to put a, a cladding on. And earlier this morning, I made a point to you that this bit here, it's going through the insulation, it's really well done. You, if you look in, you'll see that it's really well done, but it's still posing a thermal bridge problem for us because there still is a cold airflow through the inside of the pipe. So if I, if I was addressing that, I would insulate the inside just to make sure that I eliminated it. So just to make that point here. Now, happy enough with the outside of that detail, first of all. So now if I, if I turn it around, so airtight layer is intact, wind tight layer is okay. And what they've introduced here is two extra things but I need to stress to you that the wall is getting thicker and thicker and thicker. So they've introduced this service area here. So all of my plumbing, my electrical services can be brought into the construction. The airtight layer is left intact. There's no damage to it whatsoever. So any pipes, cables, anything like that can come in here. And then what they've done on the inside of that is they've introduced a warm board. So now if I add this insulation onto these two, my U value is meeting the building regulations requirements. Actually, it's probably about 0.18 on this overall construction. So I nearly have 200 millimeters of insulation, three different types, two of them with an okay U value and one of them with a much better U value in terms of the overall. So that's better. Problem with this is if my socket is going to be here or my switch is going to be here or my radiator is going to be here, whatever, the problem is I have to come through the thermal layer. I have to come through this final layer 
And so it would be better practice if I could put the insulation bank smack against that and put the service bay outside of it. That would be a better construction and then plaster off. You could use just a board and put the... Absolutely. The argument is that from the point of view of the craft, of the, of the, of the operatives doing the work, it's an extra fixing layer that I have to do. That's, that's the argument against it. So that's a pretty good detail. It's pretty good. It's a, you know, there's a little bit of an issue here and there, but it's a pretty good detail. And I'm just drawing your attention. It's airtight. The, 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 the pipe is well sealed in, but, but really there should be some insulation on that pipe there just to eliminate that area of thermal bridging. Now, are you okay with that one as a, as a starter? If this was a concrete detail, then, and when I say concrete, I mean any of your block work forms or indeed concrete itself. I, I'll just have to choose, will I put the insulation outside it? Will I put the insulation inside it? Or will I put it into it? So whichever is the most suitable in terms of, it's usually most expensive on the outside. Or will it be a combination of? And just to go back to our little rule, if it's a combination, suppose I have a cavity and I want to put insulation into that cavity. Well, I'll always put more insulation into the cavity than I will put on the inside. So again, the two to one rule will apply. So suppose I want 120 millimeters, stick 80 mils in the cavity and 40 inside. Because I want the inner wall to be a bit warmer to keep the moisture away from the inside insulation. So I can, I can balance that up. So just to be careful about them things. So if this happened to be a block work wall of any type, it doesn't matter. I still have the same issues. How am I going to do? So I'll slap the insulation somewhere outside, inside. It doesn't matter, whatever you decide to do. And today we're tending to think, just throw it on the outside, it's much easier. And the thermal bridge issue is dealt with. But I also have to then think about my internal layer and air tightness. So maybe it's going to be battening or something on the inside, put my airtight layer on that, put a service cavity in. So I have to do exactly the same things, it's just the material that's the base support material is a different material. So I can give you the detail on any of them you want to, it doesn't matter.